Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with WDSC, WRPT in Duluth, Minnesota. Today we are chatting with Trent Janicic, board chair of the Northland Foundation, who has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. And thank you, Trent, for joining us today. Thank you, Mark. It's a pleasure to be here. So this foundation looms very large in the region, and you have a particular take on how philanthropy ought to function effectively in this area. Talk a little bit about the, the philosophy that led to the founding of the Northland Foundation. So the Northland Foundation has been around for 34 years or so, give or take. Um, it was really born out of the McKnight Foundation, which is a, a larger foundation based out of the Twin Cities. Um, and what they did is they, they started, they felt like there was the opportunity to create regional uh, philanthropic organizations that had greater Minnesota uh, or rural Minnesota um, more at the forefront of what they do and what they're focusing on. And so they created six um, regional uh, initiative foundations, they called them at the time. The Northland Foundation was one of them. Uh, and the goal for, for the, each regional foundation is slightly different, but the same. Um, they, they really want to make sure that our, our region is vibrant, our rural region is vibrant, and that we're investing, like our mission for the Northland Foundation is to invest in the people um, of our communities to grow and have a vibrant, vibrant regional, um, not only economy, but regional community. And so, uh, you know, in short, I think a lot of us at the Northland Foundation are just committed to making our region a little bit better than when we left it. And so, One of the things that I find so fascinating is the idea of the McKnight Foundation being both a, a nationally active mm -hmm. as well as regionally committed. And, and their interpretation of that regional commitment was that uh, grant making and those decisions need to be taken within the region that those grants were going to be distributed. Yeah. Because those people had greater understanding of what those, uh, of what that, re so it was, a, it was a purposeful decentralization. And they, and they also threw off some of their uh, resources so that each of those foundations were set up uh, so that they were strong to do those, do those grants. Yeah, exactly. And, and at the Northland Foundation, we have three legs to our stool. Um, we have our grant making program, which in a, in a way, it mirrors exactly what you said about what McKnight saw in the initiative foundations. We work with nonprofits because in, on a more local level within our region because we believe that they know exactly what the needs are. And so we don't come in uh, as an omnipresent organization that thinks they know exactly what, what, what they need to do. We, we really wanna listen and facilitate conversation in a region and then have the partners that are most in tune with that local response be the ones that are, that are um, solving some of those, those smaller issues. And so our grant making program, you know, we, we give out about $1.6 million every single year, roughly, give or take. And that money is, is, you know, in some cases over the last, you know, 30 or so years, uh, we've given out somewhere in the neighborhood of $36 million or so um, across 5,000 different grants. So when you average it out, it's about $7,000 $7, per grant, but we have large scale grants and small scale grants, but those are two organizations, whether it be school districts, it might be other nonprofits, it might be other community organizations, it might be uh, our, our, our friends in the tribal nations that there's five in our service area. So there's a lot of, uh, we, we feel that, we feel strongly about the McKnight Foundation mantra on a local level, just like they did about the initiative. But you've also evolved the model, right? You you also provide capacity building support. Correct. Don't you? Yeah, yeah. So capacity building. One of the one of the other main things that we do is we facilitate conversation. We allow for capacity building within our grant making. We, let's let, yeah. let's define what capacity building is, because what what you're basically trying to do is to work with a nonprofit to define a need that yep. can't be satisfied by a check. Yep. Correct. And, and that could be expertise, it could be knowledge, it could be connection, it could be partnerships. Yeah. And you're helping in, the, in those areas. Yeah, we, we absolutely try to. I mean, some of those, if we, can, if we can allow a nonprofit or groups of nonprofits to get together and develop something that's long-term, more sustainable, that's obviously what the direction we'd like to go. Um, sometimes a check has an endpoint, but we would like to make sure that when we're giving out grant resources or loans that they have a long extended life, that it continues to have, um, 
have tails on that on that resource, but and that's what capacity building does. You also have a very interesting role within in terms of supporting businesses yeah. in the region. Could you talk about that? Because that's again, it's it's, yeah. it's not quite the traditional. You know, people think about foundations as as check writing machines. It's yeah. it, it's not a particularly um, uh, wonderful description, but yeah. but yep. people understand that. But this capacity building piece, and then this other element is also uh, very important in this region. Yeah, it's also one of the other legs of the stool, so I'm glad you brought it up, so thank you. Um, so one of the unique uh, aspects that the Initiative Foundations have in, in general is that they're, they're able to provide direct loans to businesses, and it's unique that our philanthropic organizations are able to do that. Um, and so we, we do give out over the last, you know, since our, since our inception, um, we've given out somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, somewhere around $67 million of, of loans to businesses, and that's saved or created about 8,200 jobs um, in our region. And so that's really, really impactful. Uh, so one example I'll, I'll give you is um, in 2012, we had a, a major flood in Duluth. And there were a, a few like-minded organizations like the Blandon Foundation and us that got together with other partners to provide capital that was readily available for businesses in a loan format or a grant format as well to, get, get, uh, to be able to recover from that, that flood and have just-in-time uh, access to capital that's right there waiting for them. So not only do we partner with other banks and other loan uh, entities, we also work with our philanthropic partners to provide loans to businesses so that they grow, so that they can um, maybe buy equipment as well from the state. So there's a lot of different funding mechanisms that we try to put together to, to help um, people generate jobs potentially, family sustaining wages, and that's really important in our region. What is the difference between a loan uh, and a relationship that is forged with a foundation versus one that is forged, forged with a commercial entity like a bank? I think they're one and the same. I think, you know, banks have, are, are really interested in, in economic growth. Mm -hmm. um, and that economic growth tends to, to work uh, if, if it's tied to an entrepreneur starting a business in the west end of Duluth. Um, whether it's uh, you know Frost River starting starting uh, their work or expanding their work and and starting to create an ecosystem that's in West Duluth, all banks are in on that the same way we're in on that, and so it seems like it's a it, it creates this vibrancy in a community that isn't I don't think they're they're mutually exclusive. I think that they working together they create uh, something that can be really really positive, like what is happening in the West End of Duluth right now, and so. I think I think that they're they're linked and as and all that I think that the most important thing with that is that we're developing great relationships with those those folks and those partners whether it's a bank or it's another philanthropic organization you know we don't have these silos in our in our region um, the the goal is to work across silos and work and have really great regional partnerships that are you know coming together for a common purpose and that's what I think we're able to to we've been able to do over the last you know 34 years. In terms of your board, talk about how your board is constructed, mm -hmm. because you have this very interesting um, uh, purview of different services that you provide. Yeah. So that requires certain expertise and certain oversight. Yeah. Yeah. There are committees that are involved, as you say, committees of experts uh, who um, are, are overseeing this because banks mm -hmm. do require, uh, or organizations that functions as a, a bank do require a certain amount of oversight. So how does your board, how is your board constructed? So our board, you know, we have 11 individuals that are on our board, our, our direct bo uh, board of trustees for the Northland Foundation. But there is the TAC, the Technical Advisory Committee, which is more of an advisory committee to Michael's work in the business loans. Um, I, I mentioned two of the legs of our stool. We have a third leg of our stool, which is our, our Kids Plus program. And maybe we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but we try to make sure we align our board of trustees with um, the areas of expertise that we have, right? So if we're interested in childcare, we should probably have somebody that has some sort of background about childcare on our board of trustees. So we're very cognizant of 
who do we have? You know, right now we just um, we just put out a call, an open call for new trustees, uh, which is something that we've been working to to move towards, where it's open to anybody in the community that's available and interested in participating and being on the Northland Foundation Board of Trustees. So we have applications that we've received, and we we go through and we look at what who do we have on the board. What's their background? What do they do for a living? Um, where do they live? All those types of things. How old are they? You know, I'm one of the younger board members and have been uh, since I came onto the board nine years ago. Um, and so, what what are what's the demographic makeup? Who are we? Where are we from? All of that background goes into this pot um, of the Northland Foundation board. And we're I'm really proud of our board. I love our board uh, dearly. Uh, I think it's been the best professional experience that. I've ever had um, being part of and associated with the Northland Foundation. But we do, we try to align that. And underneath, the, in terms of governance structure, we have a governance committee, just like other organizations. We have a finance committee. Um, and so mainly, obviously, fiduciary responsibility is the most important thing a board does. Second is governance um, and making sure that our, our president, um, Tony Serdich is doing a great job, which he absolutely is. Um, and so, you know, those are the couple main components. Um, and keeping an eye on where we're going, casting our gaze on the horizon and saying, this is where we want to go over the next 20 years. Talk about the Kids Plus initiative. Well, the Kids, Kids Plus initiative is, I have to say, it's, it's magical, all right? Um, you know, one of the things we really try to do at the Northland Foundation is bring external resources to our region um, from other places in the state, maybe nationally. Uh, and that's one of the things that the Kids Plus program does. And Kids Plus is really our educational programming, if you will. Um, and there's a whole suite of programs underneath that Kids Plus heading. Uh, and nationally renowned programs uh, like Age to Age, um, which is intergenerational, getting people in communities that, uh, older people in communities mixed with younger people to maybe work on projects together. And there's some just magic that happens there. Uh, it's our youth leadership program where we get a whole group of people, uh, young people together from the region that come into the Twin Ports in Duluth and they work on like a service project, but there's also professional development and learning that goes in, into that. And that's funded primarily through external sponsors that, that believe that it's really important to have our youth engaged on, around some sort of project. Our youth in philanthropy program where um, the Minnesota Power Foundation provides resources as well as one of our former board members, Scott, Scott Martin and his wife Holly, who have created, um, it's called, I call it the Martin Match, where they've put up some money and they've asked other board members, past board members, to also put up some money. And so you combine the Minnesota Power Foundation money with the Scott uh, and Holly Martin money, and you, you have a youth in philanthropy program where there's a philanthropic board of young people that get together and they do the same thing that we do as a board. They look at grant applications. You can apply for up to $1,000 as long as it's youth led, whatever the project is. And they look through and some of them are written, some of them are, the applications are written in CRAN. And so they're able to provide um, grants to different projects in their community, which is awesome. Thank you so much. This has been such a great conversation. Trent Janovich, thank you so much for sharing the work of the Northland Foundation uh, as its board chair, and thank you so much for your insights. Thank you, Mark. It's been a pleasure. Thanks.